Hello there, Lady K here, and it's Fan Art Friday. And our poster child for today is one that has been requested. Well, Disney was requested, but when I think Disney, this is the man that comes to mind. I'd rather the lion. This is Scar from the animated Lion King movie from, I think it's 94, I want to say. I was very young when I first saw it. And it was one of the things that influenced me to become an artist. I was able to see on the big screen what animation could do for the first time. I had grown up with like Pocahontas, I had seen like Little Mermaid, didn't care for the singing too much, but it was something that it really impacted me. It might have been a mixture of the story and losing a parent and the journey that Simba goes on, the betrayal from a family member in the way of Scar. I love Scar so much that my little gecko, if anybody's seen me on Instagram, knows that I've named her after Scar, especially when I thought she was a guy, but now she's Lady Scar, so it, it works out. What you're seeing here is basically like me drawing through the process to make Scar. I'm not trying to do a one-to-one -one exact copy. I want to still kind of have a little bit of me in there to where when you look at it, you can tell it's Scar, but you can also tell that it's not exactly Disney. Scar is one of my favorite villains of animation of like all time. He's got the screen presence, his mannerisms are great, his little snarky attitude is fantastic. It's just, it's a lot of things that are really good for just having a villain going against the grandiose Mufasa and to see him die so early is just, it was heart wrenching. I've done animation from time to time. It's very time intensive. Due to injuries, I can't really sit at a tablet for too long, so it's little spurts and animation. You can do it in little spurts, but that's a lot of spurts. It's something that I've been learning Procreate Dreams to try to get into it again. I've been learning from Aaron Blaze, who is one of the animators on The Lion King. He was the one that animated Nala. The person who animated Scar was Andreas Deja. He was created by screenwriters Irene Mekin. Mechi, Mechi, Jonathan Roberts, and Linda Wolverton. Thank you, Wikipedia. I had no idea. I did know the voice, though. The voice of Scar is Jim, Jeremy Irons. He sang two thirds of Be Prepared. He messed his voice up doing the Scar voice. And so he got replaced with Jim Cummings, who he's all over the Disney scene. Like, the snake from the movie that's got a snake. Oh, Robin Hood, that one. Uh, or it might be Jungle Book, I recall. But he, once you hear his voice, you know you know who he is. I, that's allegedly, too, why Jeremy Irons didn't come back for the live-action abysmal train wreck that's The Lion King from 2019 because people said that he couldn't do the voice, but I don't really super agree with that because there's been interviews with him just kind of talking and he kind of just talks like Scar, so I don't... Scar's design is fantastic. From a, it's a, basically a lesson in like how to simplify less is more kind of thing. It's when you're dealing with anything in it, you have to simplify. You can't have it as detailed and as hardcore as you want to go because you're going to do that frame by frame and even if you're animating on twos, that's 30 pictures in a second. You can't make it super dynamic. That's why, especially in anime, if you pay attention, they have these elaborate outfits on. And most of the time, not all the time, because there's awesome fight scenes and stuff. So it's obviously like they put the work in, but a good bit of the time, they'll, their mouths will move but you don't see like their arms also moving with gesture or a lot of facial changes or anything like that. Most of the time it's kind of static. With The Lion King specifically, there's so much emotion in the animation because it's simplified. These are lions walking around, but they're not supposed to be realistically rendered. They're stylized. They're simplified to their essence of like, you look at this thing and you understand, oh, that's a lion. Okay, oh, that's Zazu, he's flying around, like, it makes a lot of sense. That's something I have to keep reminding myself when I do this 
basic illustration is was I love doing detail, but sometimes it's better for you to simplify. Keep it, keep it simple, stupid. It's a kiss is a, a very known term. Just it's better to keep things simplified than trying to complicate them. And especially when I grew up watching the life, one of the first times, like I really, I didn't fully understand it at like eight. You know, especially when I started to really draw at like ten, I was able to mimic cartoon characters pretty easy because like they're already simplified because they have to be to be animated if i would have at 10 tried to draw like an anime character or something like i would not have learned as much now some of this is a little bit fast paced the beginning part i didn't really want to hasten too much to give you kind of a feel of the flow of how it goes when you're trying to especially for a fan art when you're trying to kind of nail down the proportions the overall feel of the character like trying to nail down like specifically like scar like his eyes are important how his face is is very important but the rest of it's more rendering where like if you want to slow it down you can but it's something that is just kind of what needs to have happen before it's completely done because especially with scar too like his color scheme is so important that he doesn't look right until you get that color scheme right i didn't i eyeballed his fur color again to not i'm not trying to make a carbon copy i'm trying to like kind of put myself in it a little bit just not a lot but something where you can discern that i did just copy it i didn't trace it because that's something too that i've i'm very good at mimicking a certain style so i've had people where they're like oh well you just trace this and i'm like well no it took me like an hour but i was i didn't trace it so I like having record of the too because to show that anybody could do what I'm doing. Like I've practiced for 15, 20 years. So yeah, I'm going to be able to do it pretty easy. That doesn't mean I didn't put a whole lot of work into it. Though. What I really appreciate too about specifically this scene from the, the shadows are very subtle because this is a horrific event that's going to happen in broad daylight. Most of the time if you see scary or disturbing or whatever it's typically at night or dusk or something this is it's day it's it's basically new and you could tell by how scar is even lit here that it's very minor but it's just enough to give him volume because especially for animation especially typically shading's not really something that they do because that's just a whole other thing you have to track through all the frames but especially in like cinema it's kind of required for it to kind of give it that extra oomph or if you see like the one i'm thinking of right now is like bob's burgers when they went and made the movie there was a lot of shadow there was a lot of extra like lighting cues and stuff that typically weren't wasn't in like the regular show and it kind of made you understand that this is a cinematic event it's not just it's not sunday morning cartoons or saturday morning so what i want to be kind of taken away from if you want to draw something, if you're a fan, draw it. It might not look perfect the first time, but that's all right. Do it a couple of times. Your fourth attempt's way, it could be way better than your first. And it's better to get it done than for, for it to be perfect. Because each time you do it, you're going to learn something. You're going to learn something new. A lot of people are like, oh, well, don't draw anime. But I think that it's more important for you to do it than anything else because it's based around like what you want to get out of doing art what you want to get out of just do whatever it you don't have to have a master class you don't have to study da vinci in order to have fun doodling thing you don't have to understand full anatomy to draw a person like most animators they they understand just enough anatomy to get by and in the words of todd mcfarland who created spawn the comic book character he's like i know just enough anatomy to make it believe and i've studied a good bit of anatomy and i'm still at that stage where it's like i'm trying to just go believable unless like i'm teaching an anatomy class or something and that's especially like what's true about scar is that he doesn't necessarily look like a lion that you'd see walking around in the in africa 
but he's designed in such a way that you understand that, that is a lion. <laughs> he's not the nicest guy. And he's a shady motherfucker. Like, I'm not, I haven't got into, like, his mannerisms and how they were coded to be certain things, which I never thought about when I was a kid. I just thought he was, Kiana was effeminate sometimes, but it was, it was part of, like, his charm. I didn't think anything else of it. But that's where it's it's kind of important to to look back at the things that inspired us as kids because there's something there that sparked our creativity or our imagination or made it to where we wanted to watch the video 50 times and I think that's good for us to look back on. Hopefully this has been enjoyable, informative. The first time doing a kind of a longer piece. I'm trying to get used to all this different software, so I hope it was enjoyable. So I just kind of keep being awesome. Peace.